so I was playing my sister today from the station and was putting it in iMovie so that I could send it to you and it got corrupted and messed up. I can watch it on my computer, but I cannot export it in any way. So in order to show it to you, I'm going to record my screen while it's playing on my computer. And I know this is lame, but I can't figure out any other way to do it. And I'm not gonna let Satan win this one. So here we go. Okay, so I had a lot of people say that that last video was helpful with learning how to study the Book of Mormon like I do. So I thought I would do it one more day so that you can see how this continues on and maybe will be helpful. The last one I did, I was very uh, quick. I d was like, oh, it's New Year's, so we've got to do this. And so maybe I can be a little bit more thoughtful in the way I do it, but let's do it one more time. So I'm going to share my screen with you. Hmm. La, 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 da, da, da. I should have had this all pulled up already. Okay, I'm a little further along because I've been doing it the last two days, but I... I'm in Helaman 10. I haven't started it. I don't want this on. How do I get this off my face? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is pray. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this for one second and say a prayer. In this prayer, we express gratitude that we have the Book of Mormon for the times that it has answered our prayers. We repent and we ask to gain knowledge and inspiration. Anything that can help us that day. Okay, I want to share one scripture with you real quick. Um, no, not a scripture. I want to talk a little bit about pondering because I think we're told over and over to ponder the scriptures, but I don't think we know how to do it. And I really like a quote by Marvin J. Ashen. He said, by pondering, we give the spirit an opportunity to impress and direct. Pondering is a powerful link between the heart and mind. As we read the scriptures, our hearts and minds are touched. If we use the gift to ponder, we can, intake, we can take these eternal truths and realize how we can incorporate them into our daily actions. And President Monson said, I implore each of us to prayerfully study and ponder the Book of Mormon every, do, every day. As we do so, we will be in a position to hear the voice of the Spirit, to resist temptation, to overcome doubt and fear, and to receive heaven's help in our lives. So this is an important part of this whole process, and I don't want anybody to skip it or to just not know how to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again, and we will continue. <clears throat> okay. All right, I'm in Helaman chapter 10. I've said my prayer. I have, now I'm gonna start reading. And if you weren't, if you didn't watch the first video, I just start reading until something sticks out to me. So I read and I'm not ignoring the story. I'm understanding, I'm getting the story, but when I read, I'm reading to see what Heavenly Father wants me to learn that day about my life and how to guide me. And so as I read, I'm not going to read out loud this time. I'm just going to like scroll down until I get to somewhere that, and then we'll, we'll go from there. <clears throat> I have my paper open to, this is the one we did the other day. This is what I told you I do. I just keep it going on the same paper. So I have one continuous document that says daily scripture study, but today is January 5th. And so that's all I do. Put the date and then I just start reading. Okay, this is funny right here. And it came to pass Nephi went his way towards his own house, pondering upon the things which the Lord had shown him. I promise, I promise I have not read this ahead of time. I just am doing it like I would normally do. So this is kind of funny. Maybe we need to learn about pondering. So I click on pondering and it says meditation, meditate. 
So let's go over and see what scriptures we find about meditating. And it says no related content, but it's a lie. There it is. Isaac went out to meditate in the field. We'll start at the very beginning. And he lifted up his eyes. Okay, so, and he saw camels were coming. This might not be super applicable to me, so I'm just going to go back. Um, and when I read through, I kind of just read until one of them, like, kind of pops out to me. So, okay, Lord, consider my meditation. Let's see what that's about. And like I said, I like to click on the actual scripture and start a couple before and read a couple after. Well, there isn't anything before. Um, so it says, give ear to my words, O Lord, consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for unto thee will I pray. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord, in the morning I will direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. Okay, so I'm going to, it's starting to go off, but I really like this. I really like this. So I'm going to copy it. And I have to remember it's Psalm 5. I always forget and have to go back and forth like 10 times because I have no mind. So I would just write, five and then I'll paste it and I sometimes like to just put verse like this give ear to my words and consider my meditation hearken unto the voice of my cry so he's saying here listen to me heavenly father for I'm going to pray to you, and my voice thou shalt hear in the morning. This is cool. This is a pattern right now. Wake up, read your scriptures. Look, in the morning I will direct my prayer unto thee, and I will look up. What a great scripture to start this today. I'm turning to you. I'm looking towards heaven, so teach me something. Consider this meditation I'm about to do. Ah, oh, I love it. And I maybe I should have put here that I'm in Helaman 10 so that I don't forget or if later I want to go back and see how I got there. Okay, so that was cool, right? So then if I, if sometimes if I'm content, okay, I've done enough studying on meditation, I'll go back to my original scripture. This is kind of interesting to me. It's something we were talking about. So I'm going to look up a few more. It says, let the meditation of my heart be acceptable. Meditate on thee in the night. Okay, some people may not be morning people. Let's do it in the nighttime. Um, I will meditate also of all thy work. What's this one about? And talk of thy doings. Okay, I, like I said, let's click on it. Let's go over. Let's read a little before and a little after. And sometimes I even read like the chapter heading to even know what's going on. Um, but in Psalm, you pretty much don't have to. So let's just go ahead and start here in 12. I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of all thy doings. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary, who is so great a God as who is so great a God as our God. Thou art the God that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. And I am going to mark this. And I don't always sit and ponder yet. I wait until I put it down. So Psalm 77 12 and 13. <clears throat> so I'm going to write Psalm 77, verse 12 and 13. Now I told you when I feel the whoosh of the spirit, as I read that, I was touched by it. So I copied it. But then if you go and look in our order, we read, we ponder, what does this have to do with me, my family, my job? Why was this saved? And then the next part is to write down your feelings about it. So let's read over this. I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy doings. So right here, I would say, this is what I'm doing right now. I'm talking about God's doings. And then thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is who is so great a God as our God? <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is all <clears throat> this morning. Right? God is so good. Anything, let's see. Sorry. Does anything 
feel better than what Heavenly Father makes me feel. No, I need to always stay close to him, okay? Thou art the God that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. Now, I've mentioned that my sister-in-law died this week. Maybe if I was feeling a little bitter towards this, or if I was feeling bad, I could remember, maybe Heavenly Father could say, um, you know what? I'm a God that does wonders, and I can strengthen my people. All right, so maybe we're done with that for a minute. Let's go back to meditate. So we were talking about pondering. Um, see if there's anything else maybe that we need. You must study it out in your mind. Okay, let's see what this is in Doctrine and Covenants. Let's go to nine, right? <clears throat> All right, it says... All right, so this is when Oliver Cowdery has been begging Joseph Smith to translate, and he wants to do what Joseph is doing. And basically, the Lord is telling him he needs to be content to just be the scribe. So let's come down just a few above. That's what I like to do. Um, do not murmur, my son, for it is wisdom in me that I have dealt with you after this manner. Behold, you have not understood you have supposed that I would give it unto you when you took no thought, save it was to ask me. Okay, so if Heavenly Father is teaching me to teach you how to read the scriptures like that, let's apply this today. Maybe in your life, you've only known just how to pray, but he's teaching us today how to get answers to our prayers. And he says, but behold, I say unto you, you must study it out in your mind. And then you must ask me if it be right. And if it be right, I will cause that your bosom shall burn. This is what I call the whoosh of the spirit, right? Therefore, you shall feel that it is right. And this is the key to studying the scriptures this way. You pray and then studying it out in your mind is studying the scriptures for me. I think this is the best way to do it. Sometimes you can just sit and think, but I really think that delving into the scriptures this way is a way to ponder. Because it says, I will cause that your bosom shall burn and you will feel that it is right. That is what happens when the Lord speaks to you through the pages of scripture. But if it not be right, you shall have no such feelings, but you shall have a stupor of thought that shall cause you to forget the thing which is wrong. Therefore, you cannot write that which is sacred, save it be given you from me. And this, stand fast in the work where I have called you, um, and you shall be lifted up in the last day. So maybe, yeah. That may have a little bit, <clears throat> that may have a little bit to do with me and my life, but I am going to go back to us. So this is the pattern. And since we're in Doctrine and Covenants 9, let's just jump back to 8 for one second because this is the best thing in the world. Okay. This is how the whoosh of the spirit goes. This is what I tell you is the whoosh, right? He says... Um, oh my gosh, you guys, <laughs> this is so cool that I am sharing this pattern with you today and we end up here. Look at Heavenly Father is directing all of us. All right, Oliver Cowdery, very, and put your name in. That's another thing my mission president taught us to do. Put your name in where other names are. It helps to make it relevant to you. And... It says, so I'm going to say, Melanie, verily, verily, I say unto you that as surely as the Lord liveth, who is your God and your Redeemer, even so surely shall you receive a knowledge of whatsoever thing ye shall ask in faith with an honest heart, believing that you shall receive a knowledge concerning the engravings of old records. So this is what we're asking for. I want a knowledge of the Book of Mormon. This is what we're talking about, um, which contain those parts of my scripture of what of which has been spoken by the manifestation of the Spirit. Yea, behold, I will tell you in your mind and in your heart by the Holy Ghost 
which shall come upon you and which shall dwell in your heart. And this is the scripture three and four is the one that I was coming to, to share with you. Behold, this is the spirit of revelation. Behold, this is the spirit by which Moses brought the children of Israel through the Red Sea on dry ground. I've mentioned this a zillion times, but maybe if this is the first time you're listening to me talk about reading the Book of Mormon this way, do you think if you stood on the bank of the Red Sea and watched it part, you would know a miracle happened? Well, God is telling us that this spirit of revelation is the same as the spirit that parted the Red Sea. So when Heavenly Father answers your prayers through the scriptures, you're going to feel it in your heart like you were seeing that kind of miracle because it's that strong. Remember when Joseph Smith, let's see. Remember when Joseph Smith was reading the Bible in his room wondering what to do and he read in James one five two five. I don't remember. He read in James, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. And he said, never did any scripture come with more force into the heart of a person than that did into mine. And I'm paraphrasing, sorry. But that led him to the grove, right? So when Heavenly Father speaks to us through the pages of scripture, you're going to know. It's going to be like the Red Sea is parting in your room. And I kind of feel like that's happening to us today as we're going through this. This isn't where I thought this was going to go. I had no idea. I just opened up in Helaman 10 and started like, you know, moving around. But I do think that that was, was really cool. So anyway, okay. Okay, and this, in verse 4, I want to read this too. Therefore, this is thy gift. Apply unto it, and blessed art thou, for it shall deliver you out of the hands of your enemies, Where, when, if it were not so, they would slay you and bring your soul to destruction. Oh, remember these words and keep my commandments. Remember, this is your gift. And I think, you know, and down here it talks about this isn't everybody's gift, but if we are applying this to our life, this Book of Mormon that we have, this way of communicating with God is our gift. And it does keep our soul from destruction because I think when we start going the wrong way or we're confused about something, it will always bring us back. It will always save the day. Heavenly Father will always tell you what you need to know. And it's amazing. So, okay. All right, we're going to go back to let's just go back to Helaman 10 because I don't want you guys to think that I never read from the scriptures that I just spend all day scripture chasing around because I don't I do continue reading so I'm going to get back in here in three and keep reading until I come to something that touches me again okay <clears throat> here it is this is interesting so in backing up, Nephi, remember he was on the tower and he was praying and everybody came around. And then the part that I read in the past couple of days was the people saying like, oh, you're the worst. You're not a real prophet. And he goes, really? If I'm not a prophet, then go check on the king. You'll find him dead. His brother did it, you know, whatever. So, and then everybody left. And it says here, as he was pondering, being much cast down because of the wickedness of the people, okay, He's doing what we're doing. He's thinking about his situation. Behold, a voice came unto him saying, Blessed art thou, Nephi, for those things which thou hast done. For I have beheld that thou hast with unweariness declared the word which I have given unto thee, unto this people. And thou hast not feared them, and thou hast not sought the, thine own life. But thou hast sought my will, and to keep the commandments. <laughs> okay, I feel like that's to me. And that was very sweet as we're doing this for everyone to see. Um, because thou has done this with such unwearings, I will bless thee forever. This is kind of tender to me, so I'm just going to copy it and put it down. Um. going to write so tender. I didn't mean for this to turn into this, but like I said, sometimes, <laughs> anyway, this is, this is just how it goes. Okay, let's continue. 
All right, right here. Um, so the Lord's talking to Nephi, the son of Helaman, and he says that, <clears throat> I will give unto you power that whatsoever ye shall seal on earth shall be sealed in heaven, and whatsoever you loose shall be loosed in heaven. And then I'm going to say, what a great comfort this is to me this week after losing Brittany. What would we do without the blessings of the gospel and the sealing? I told you I like to make these what I write in <clears throat> italics just so I can differentiate. <clears throat> All right, let's read a little bit more. And here he's telling uh, Nephi all things that he can do with this power and it's God's power. This is priesthood power. This is the power that God gives us to us. And it says, if you shall say into this temple, be rent, it'll be done. And if you want to move this mountain, it'll happen. Um, if you want me to smite the people, it'll come to pass. Um, because he knew he was his prophet and he knew that he wouldn't ask for anything that was amiss. Right. And Okay, and it says, when the Lord had spoken these words unto Nephi, he did not stop and he did stop and did not go unto his own house. So maybe he was having this thing. He was so sad and he's like, I'm just going to go home and go to bed. But then after having that little boost by the Lord, that little pep talk from the Lord, it said, he did return unto the multitude who were scattered and began to declare unto them the word of God, which had been spoken unto him. And so... Because he said right here, I command you that you should go and declare unto this people. So what do we learn? If you, even if you're not writing this whole thing, sometimes I'll just go and say um, something like this. As I'm thinking about the next few scriptures, I'll just say Nephi wanted, it looks like, okay, we'll say this. I'm. <laughs> it looks like Nephi wanted to go home and take a sad nap but the lord told him to go and tell the people to repent and he did it okay and i think about that how does that apply to me well Melanie, you've had your sad nap. Now go and yeah. Now go and do next week's <laughs> podcast. It's time. Okay. So this again is the way I do it. This is how my mission president taught. Um, it's beautiful. It's the best thing. I have shared a lot of instances in season two, episode two. I will link it down in the video under here. Basically, I explained this whole process in season two, episode two of the podcast, and I will link it down wherever it goes in there under the YouTube channel so that you can go listen to that one and get the full thing. I give some more examples of where this has happened in my life and how it's blessed my life. But there is a power in the Book of Mormon. This is what Ezra Taft Benson said, that will begin to flow into your life the minute you begin a serious study of the book. And this is it. This is where the power is. This is where you can hear the voice of the Lord to lead you in your life every day. It's beautiful. It's fun. And... It's the reason why I stayed when everybody else, not everybody, every single person I know, when so many people I know have left, this is the reason I stayed because the Lord answered my prayers. Even when I had questions about some stuff that people had given me, like 
that was hard to understand about the church. I go, instead of looking up this information on Wikipedia or something, I went to the Lord and said, I don't understand. Why did this happen? And then I opened my scriptures and I would find answers like, it doesn't really matter, but trust God. Or I would find answers. It happened because of this, or this is kind of how this was. So it can course correct us. It can straighten us out. And there's one other scripture I just thought of, but I need to find it. So hold on just a sec. Okay. So it's in Helaman 3 verse 29. It says, yea, we see that whosoever will. So it's your choice. You can turn to the scriptures or you can turn to the internet. You can turn to the Lord or you can turn to your friends, but whosoever will may lay hold upon the word of God. We do that by opening the scriptures, which is quick and powerful, which will divide asunder all the cunning and snares and wiles of the devil. So it will straighten out the things that you're confused about. It will make you feel God's love when you don't think God may be real. It will tell you you're doing so great. And sometimes they'll tell you you're doing so wrong that you need to stop murmuring like Lehman and Lemuel. Um, it'll course correct you. And it says, so it's going to divide us under all those problems. It's going to clear up the problems and it will lead the man of Christ in a straight and narrow course across that everlasting gulf of misery, which is prepared to engulf the wicked and land their souls, yea, their immortal souls at the right hand of God in the kingdom of heaven to sit down with Abraham and Isaac and with Jacob and with all our holy fathers to go no more out. If you don't want to leave, if you want to stay, if you want to increase your relationship with your heavenly father and Jesus Christ and to have the spirit in your life more, turn to the Book of Mormon every day and read it like this. It'll change your life. Shine on!